All right, in this lecture, we're gonna go ahead and talk about shapes. Now, shapes are the second most important thing when it comes to drawing um, next to lines. So what is a shape? Well, there's two different types of shapes. There's geometrical shapes and there's organic shapes. Now, you're probably pretty familiar with both, but you're probably more familiar with geometric shapes. These are the shapes that you grew up with and learned about in school. So the simple shapes that make up the basic geometric shapes are first the square, which can also then be turned on its side to make a diamond. And then there's also the circle. Then there's the triangle. Then there's the trapezoid. And then there's the rectangle. So these are the basic shapes that make up basically everything. Now, what are organic shapes? Well, organic shapes are anything that aren't geometrical. Geometrical means that it can be figured out using math. So a triangle, you can create a triangle by using math, but an organic shape, nowadays you can actually create organic shapes using math, but it's a lot more technical. So an organic shape would be, let's say, the shape of a pumpkin. So if I just drew the outline of a pumpkin, like so, that's an organic shape. Or an organic shape could be something very scribbly, like so. Or another organic shape could be, let's say, a coffee mug. So I can draw my coffee mug like so. And that is an organic shape. It's not geometrical. And geometrical also means that you can split it right down the middle and it's the same on both sides. These are organic because you can't do that. You kind of can with a pumpkin, but the pumpkin is still considered more of an organic shape. Now, everything can be broken down into these basic shapes. And from those basic shapes, what you do next is you create organic shapes. So for example, let's say we're drawing a character and the character's head is going to be a circle, okay? So we're gonna draw a circle like so. And then they're gonna have a body. Let's say the body is a skinny rectangle, like so. And then let's say we need to add some legs in there. So we're just going to draw in triangles for the legs for now. And they're a little bit curved. And then let's say the feet are rectangles, like so. And then he needs some arms. So we'll do triangles for the arms, long triangles. And then we'll do circles for his hands. And we can also add this arm behind his body, like so but you'll see it's completely made out of simple shapes. Let's try something else. Let's say we want to draw a lamp. Well, a lamp can also be broken down into simple shapes. Now, even though there's gonna be some perspective involved with this lamp, when you're first trying to sketch out your images, you wanna start with simple shapes. So for a lamp, we might start with a lampshade that will just be a simple trapezoid. And then we're going to create the base. Now the base could be any type of shape you want. For me, it's going to be an oval, which that's also another thing is the circle can also is also considered an ellipse. And so ovals also apply to the simple shapes. Um, so let's go ahead and add that in. So we might add it in like so. And then we can go ahead and add in a rectangle for the stem or the neck of our lamp. And now we have a lamp, just very basic shapes. Now, once you get it to this point, then you can go ahead and start turning these into more organic shapes. And so you do that by, let's say we add a little chin on our head, on our head, and then we can go ahead and add our neck in. Um, let's say we kind of curve this out a little bit more so it's not so rigid. And then we can go ahead and also add some hair to our character. So I'm not sure how we want this hair to look, but maybe something like so. So now our character has some hair, and these are much more organic shapes. And maybe we add a little bit more of a bend to his arm, so it's not just such a curvy, sort of noodly arm. And now if we were to trace out the shape of our character, it would be a lot more organic looking. Let's try this with our lamp. So if we move over to our lamp, we might slice off this bottom area like so, so it's nice and flat. And we might make this more of an egg shape than an oval shape. And then with this, we might introduce a little bit more perspective. And so we might add more curve along this bottom, like so. And then we might add sort of an oval up here at the top so that we can see sort of down into the top of our lampshade. And now we have a much more organic shape. 
Another thing to understand about shapes is that they create empty spaces. So for example, this is considered an empty space right here or negative space. Negative space is very important when you're drawing. So you wanna keep track of where your negative space is. Down here between his legs, you could also consider this area right here, negative space, as well as right here. Where are some other places you would see negative space? Well, let's say that we have a guy sitting on a bench, okay? And this guy's gonna be thinking. He's gonna have his head down like so, and he's going to have his arm out like this, and then it's gonna be propping his head up, and his other arm will just be sitting next to him like so. Okay, so now we have our guy. Now where's the empty space in this? Well, the empty space is gonna be right here in this area and right here in this area. That's empty space. You wanna make sure that you have empty space in your artwork because it makes your artwork look a lot better. So whenever you can add that empty space in, do it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Photoshop and demonstrate to you how images can be broken down into simple shapes. You wanna start looking at the world as simple shapes and not as images. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, the reason why I'm doing this in Photoshop is because this is the easiest way for me to draw on top of an image and demonstrate this to you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. If you wanna do this also, you can just draw on top of a printed off picture, or if you have Photoshop, you can do it the same way I'm doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush tool and I'm just going to draw on top of this. So we have a Mickey Mouse here. I'm just gonna start breaking him down into his simple shapes. So first, starting with his head. His head is just a simple circle. And then his nose is an oval. His tip of his nose is also an oval. This bottom part is an oval. His ears are circles. Um, we have a rectangle right here, and then two ovals for the hat. And then we have circles for the hands, and then rectangles for the arms. And then we have sort of a trapezoid or a rectangle shape for the body. And then we have basically a circle for the torso. And then we have little rectangles for these bottom parts or his pant legs. And then we have rectangles for his legs. And then for the feet, I'm just gonna break them down into simple blocks like so. So now we have the simple shapes laid out of Mickey Mouse. Let's go ahead and turn off our image so we can see those shapes. So you can see that entire Mickey Mouse is made out of very simple shapes. And just an interesting fact, when Walt Disney first designed Mickey Mouse, he wanted them to be made out of extremely simple shapes so that any animator could replicate them and animate them extremely easily just by tracing pennies and other objects. So this is why I started out with Mickey Mouse is because I knew that he's created out of very, very simple shapes. Now, how can we turn these simple shapes into more of an organic shape? Well, that's where we start refining things like the feet. So if we turn the drawing back on, we can go ahead and add a new layer above this and we can start refining this block into more of the shape of his foot. So something like so, and his legs kind of have more of a bend to him. We can start working on this foot. So if we turn our drawing layer off and we turn off our background image, you'll see we start to get something that's starting to resemble something a lot more like Mickey Mouse. Now, the point of doing this is you lay out your shapes like so, and then you want to do another layer on top of that. Or if you're drawing with paper and pencil, then you wanna lightly draw your shapes out. And then on top of that, you start actually refining it into your organic shapes. This is how professionals do their artwork. So a lot of people just wanna go straight in and start drawing the image, but you need to work from the basics and move all the way up to the more intricate details of your artwork. Let's go ahead and break another image down into its shapes. So here we have a landscape. So using my brush tool again, I'm gonna go ahead and break this down into simple shapes. So starting with my horizon line, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a line going across like so. And so that's our first basic shape, is just sort of this rectangle down here. Next is the tree. So the tree is kind of a line with a circle on top of it. And then our mountains can be broken down into two triangles. So one like so, and then the other one in front of it. And then this other mountain back here can be more of a trapezoid. So it's got a flat top. And those are the basic shapes. If you wanted to, you could even include this 
cloud back here. It's kind of a triangle shape. And let's go ahead and turn on that background image off. So now you can see even this image can be broken down into basic shapes. And once you get it broken down into basic shapes, then you can go in and add detail, like more of a curve along this bottom edge of the mountain. Same with over here, you can add a little bit more there. Your tree might have a couple of branches sticking off in certain areas. Um, your horizon line might not be a completely straight line. It might have more of a zigzag effect to it because there's little trees and plants and all kinds of things along that edge, maybe even some bushes out there. Let's try one more image. So this is going to be a more complicated image of a girl or a ballerina to be more exact. And we're going to break her down into her basic images. And we're going to break her down into her basic shapes. So let's start with her head. So her head is basically a circle. I'm gonna bring my brush size up so you can see that a little bit better. So her head is basically a circle and then it has a triangle attached to it. So it kind of creates a raindrop sort of a shape. And then she's got her bun on the back of her head and then she's got her neck which is a rectangle and then her body is couldn't be thought of as two different shapes. It can be thought of as either a rectangle or it can be thought of as a trapezoid, two trapezoids actually. So we got a trapezoid there and then we got a trapezoid here that kind of comes down more into the waist. And then her arm can be broken down into two rectangles. So there's a rectangle there and then there's a rectangle there. And then her hand can just be broken down into one rectangle there, one there, and one triangle for her thumb. Let's break down her other arm. So we're seeing sort of the edge of that rectangle and then we're gonna see the edge of this rectangle. And it's almost more of a trapezoid since it's tapering in more towards one end. And then over here we can break this down into a rectangle and then a triangle for the thumb and sort of a trapezoid for those that bunch of fingers right there. And then her tutu can be broken down into a trapezoid shape. So as you can see, even though her tutu is curving around here, we're going to leave that out for now because we just want to break it into its separate individual basic shapes. Then her leg is a trapezoid. And then we have another trapezoid going down here that's making up the calf. And so the calf is made out of two trapezoids like so, or you could even think about that as a diamond if you wanted to, to simplify it even further. And then we have her foot, which is kind of a triangle shape. And then we do her back leg. So another trapezoid back here, and then we can create another trapezoid there. And we can even make this a triangle. And then this foot can also be broken down into a simple triangle like so. Now, like I said, shapes are going to be the most important part when it comes to your drawings. If you don't get your shapes right, nothing else is going to look correct. So you want to make sure that you really study shapes and images and objects and really start to understand how they play with each other and play off of each other. So your assignment for this lecture is to go ahead and take a bunch of images and break them down into their separate shapes. Once you've done that, then I want you to draw a picture of something, let's say a lamp or even a character that you want to design, but I only want you to draw the simple shapes. Once you've done that, go ahead and post that to the Q&A section of the course or the Facebook group so we can all see your work and your progress. Thanks for watching this lecture and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.